Hey guys, it's Bart Johnson here. Today I want to talk to you about some advanced monitoring features that are out there that will help you to get the best image out of your digital camera, whether it be a video camera, DSLR, mirrorless, or anything like that. A lot of times uh, there are things on the screen that we have difficulty seeing or discerning with our eyes and some monitors and cameras out there have some advanced features to help us make sure that we have everything looking perfect. I want to go through some of those features with you guys and show you how they're used, what they're for, and why you might want it in a monitor or camera that you're looking to purchase. I'm going to use my Atomos Shogun to go through and demonstrate some of the most common features that are out there. And hopefully you guys will get a better feeling for how these tools are used and how they can possibly help you. Okay guys, so here we go. I've set up a little still life if you, uh, if you were here using my Canon 5D Mark III running into my Atomos Shogun. Now again, I'm using the Shogun just as an example to demonstrate all these different monitoring tools, but many of these tools are available in monitors from different brands of different prices. Um, this just has the fullest feature set that I know of, so it's gonna allow me to demonstrate all the different tools that are out there and show you how to use them. The first thing I wanna go into is I'm gonna go into some of our assistant tools here. Um, here we have different waveforms. Now, the first one that I wanna to go to that you'll hear about a lot is this guy right here. And this is called, let me just get out of that there. And this is called the Luma Parade, or oftentimes you'll see it referred to as a histogram. Um, and what this does is it shows you the full dynamic range of your camera from darks down here at the zero line to highlights up here at 100. And it's gonna show you how much of the dynamic range of this image is being taken up with my current exposure. So this will help you to make sure that you don't underexpose or get any blacks below this zero line. And it'll help you make sure that you don't have any highlights that are overexposed above this 100 line. And as you can see, I do have some highlights that are overexposed. So what I could do is come over and I could stop down and bring it down to save, save those highlights. So now my highlights aren't clipping and I have a little bit darker down here, but if we turn it off and look, our main subject here, Captain America, actually looks pretty properly exposed and nothing is blown out. Let's go to the next tool that I'm sure you've probably seen before. It's this guy right here, the RGB Parade. I'm sure a lot of you guys have probably seen this mainly while editing, but might not know exactly how to use it while shooting. So this has the same kind of scale from zero, your darks down here, to your highlights at 100 over here, but this breaks out um, the, the colors per channel for RGB. So you have all of your colors there and you see how much of each color exists in your image. Um, this comes particularly in handy if you want to deal with white balance. So let me go ahead and show you how that works. So the way you would use this to deal with white balance is you would take a white balance card or a uh, whatever you're going to be white balancing to and place that in the scene so it takes up the whole thing. Now, all of my channels should be level and correct if my white balance is correct. Now you can see I have a little bit of mixed lighting here in this room, so I'm actually a little bit hotter in the reds, which means I'm probably white balanced a little too cool for the light that I'm getting. Um, so I would need to bring it down um, and shift a little bit more towards tungsten in order to balance these out. But that's how you can use that RGB parade in order to make sure that you have correct white balance. The next tool is one you've probably also seen a lot in the editing process and that is this guy right here. This is called your vector scope. And what this is gonna show you is it shows you detail for all of your color information. So it has these markers set around it and each one is for a different color value. Here's reds here, here's yellow right there. You have your greens, your cyans, which are your blues. Um, and it has these sort of spikes and everything. And if you're properly balanced uh, in terms of your white balance, all of these should be heading directly towards 
one of those particular colors. So like, you, like I said, it looks like my red is a little bit off. My blues are a little bit off, so I would need to balance those. Now, the other thing that this tool deals with is it handles, uh, it'll show you how saturated your colors are. So saturation will be determined by how far out these actually go. So right now I have a pretty saturated image. I'm just shooting the regular profile in the Canon 5D Mark III. But if I were shooting a log profile, this would be much more squeezed and in the center. So that's how you can use that tool. Moving on to some of our other camera assist tools that you'll probably be familiar with. We go in here and one that I'm sure many people have heard of is focus peaking. So here we have focus peaking. Let me set it to something you're familiar with. So focus peaking will highlight with whatever color you select what area of your image is in focus. Um, and it does this by detecting edges, usually based on contrast in the image. Uh, so you can shift your focus and there will be a colored highlight around what is in focus. And with this I can change the color. So now you can see Captain America, is, uh, he's got some green outlines around him. Um, so you're going to know that Captain America is in focus and everyone else isn't. Obviously it's a little obvious with this depth of field here. but. Uh, just for purposes to demonstrate, let me show you a mode that the Shogun has where you change it to focus peaking only. So now you can really see where my focus is. And if I take my focus and I adjust it and move, you can actually see the focus shift. There's Iron Man. Iron Man's eyes are in focus right now. And now if I turn this focus peaking off, or rather come back to color, you can see that our image has indeed shifted. So focus peaking is showing me that Iron Man is the most in focus. I got some on the Hulk, I got some others back here, but Captain America is not in focus. So focus peaking will help you nail that fine focus detail. Okay, so another very common tool that you'll see out there on a lot of uh, cameras uh, and even monitors is uh, your zebras. And zebras, what they do is they basically highlight with this little sort of marching ants kind of zebra stripes. It highlights and shows you what uh, areas of your image might be getting overexposed. Now, this has something, and most do as well, what's called the zebra threshold, where you can select what the percentage is. So say I want to know when something's getting to about 80%. Okay. So those are getting to 80%, but they're not 100% overexposed, but I know that I'm getting close. Now, if I moved it up to 95%, I can see that we just have two smaller points that are pretty close to 100% white. Go to 100, yep, we have a little specular highlight right there on Captain America's uh, helmet there. And so there's no information in that point. Now, another exposure tool that many people probably aren't familiar with, and if they are familiar with it, don't know how it actually works, is called false color. So let me go ahead and turn on false color. And obviously now, our image here looks really wonky. Uh, what are we supposed to do with this information? Well, what this is doing is it's showing you the exposure in different parts of your image, but it's showing it with a color representation. Um, now, as you can see, up along the side here, there is actually a scale that shows you where everything should be. So if anything were red, it's blown out, and if anything is all the way down here at the bottom, it's getting a little, uh, little underexposed. And there's a little, little pink in the middle here that usually is for skin tones, and different monitors will have different colors for different scales, but they usually have a scale for you to see. So let me show you how this will shift if I adjust our exposure. So if I open up, you can see that we're starting to, sorry about that, we're starting to get more red, more orange, more yellow, a lot of those highlights and blown out. So if we go now and left it like this, turn it off, obviously we have an image that is overexposed. So that's how you use false color. So our last tool is another uncommon tool, um, but it, it, it can be very handy and it is in here. It is blue channel. 
Now, what blue channel does is it shows you a representation of your image uh, in grayscale, but it's based off of only the blue channel that the sensor is detecting. Now, the reason for this is that the blue channel is where camera noise or sensor noise becomes most apparent and you're gonna be able to see it. Um, so if you have a higher ISO and you wanna check really how noisy is your footage, this will allow you to see it. So let me go ahead and adjust the ISO and crank it up on the 5D Mark III and show you exactly what you can see with the blue channel. So if I take my ISO here and begin to crank it up, we're coming way up. Let me open up my exposure too just to really do it so you can see. Now if we look over here, we can clearly see we have a lot of noise happening in the shadows. We have some noise dancing in our mids and our highlights are pretty much blown out. But let's take it down the other way and go dark. Now you can really see everything dancing around and you can see all of that sensor noise. Um, I have the ISO all the way up right now on the 5D, which means this image would not be clean and really probably would not be usable without some serious cleanup. So there you go, guys. There's an overview of a lot of the electronic monitor assistant tools that you'll find out there that'll help you with things like exposure, with focus, and even with checking how much noise is going to be in your image coming off of the sensor. Like I said, you can find these in all sorts of monitors and even some cameras out there, um, but you may not know what they're for or how to use them. So I hope that helps you guys out.